And here we go, painting up the Dark Elf Cold One Chariots, and starting with the Cold Ones themselves, and we're skipping this part in the video. Uh, that's because I already did a video on painting Cold One Knights, and I'm painting these Cold Ones the exact same way, so um, go back and check that video if you like. I'll include a link right about here. And uh, take a look and come back to this one and uh, we'll move on to the next part of the chariot. In this actual video we're going to start by painting the chariot itself and uh, after a black primer we're dry brushing the whole thing with some Vallejo Game Color Stormy Blue. As you can see uh, the chariot is being painted in pieces. Uh, it does make it a lot easier to uh, get to all the nooks and crannies this way. Uh, because painting it with the cold one knights, excuse me, the cold ones and the charioteers and uh, all the walls of the chariots all put together would be nigh impossible to get a good, decent job. Next comes a lighter dry brush of the previous stormy blue mixed in with a little bit of magic blue. And I'm just concentrating on the edges, trying to pick out the edges on the, uh, the chariot, uh, yoke. Ah, that's the proper word, yes, yoke. Um, and my goal here is I didn't want it super blue like my straight magic blue color and I didn't want it black, so I'm going something for it in the middle. Uh, fairly similar to what I did with the uh, hair on the witch elves. So uh, that's the goal here. On to the next step, and I'm mixing in a little bit of white with my magic blue and really picking out the edges of the chariot uh, and that's it you can just see uh, a few little lines here and there just where the uh, along the edges of the chariot and that helps to uh, pick them out give them good contrast by uh, picking out a really good crisp edge and then for the last step mixing in more white to the previous mix and this is going just on the tips of the edges, if that makes sense. Uh, essentially wherever two or three points meet. Um, just adding a little bit of sparkle here and there. And uh, less is more of this technique. If I overdo it, then it becomes a highlight, not edging. So um, just a few points. And uh, hopefully you're noticing how I'm holding the brush. People uh, always you know, look for a good tip on a brush, but it's the sides of the brush you want to use more often than the tips. So. If you notice, I'm using the side to pick out the edges. It makes it a lot easier than using the tip of the brush. Next comes the side walls of the chariot. And I originally tried brush painting these, and then I realized I got an airbrush. It'll be so much easier painting this uh, extremely flat, large surface with that. And uh, I do apologize. My hand is in the way for most of this part because... Um, there's ready, the spears on these pieces were ready-made, you know, handles, uh, so I didn't use a stick to keep my hand out of the way and to hold up the part, so I apologize for that. But anyway, uh, airbrushing them with Vallejo model color blue violet, my main army color, and uh, actually in this step I am adding uh, a bit of highlight by mixing in my standard wolf gray in and uh, just highlighting towards the tops and bottoms of the walls. And here, adding one more highlight, uh, just on the top and bottom edges. Uh, again, just adding more wolf gray to the previous mix. And uh, pretty delicate work here. I usually don't use my airbrush for this type of delicate work. Uh, I like to use it more for this type of stuff, but uh, it's something I have to work on. And again, sorry for the hand. And then finally back at the desk, uh, again using a wolf gray blue violet mix, uh, just edging the details, uh, picking out the edges. Obviously can't do it this with uh, the airbrush, so just give me a crisp edge to wherever it's needed. I was playing around with some new colors for wood on this project and uh, came up with something good. Unfortunately, I did not write it down. I don't know exactly what I used. I believe, I knew what burnt umber was used, and I believe uh, I highlighted that with English uniform, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, there you have it. 
And I'm including this part because I picked up some of the Army Painter Quick Shade inks. Uh, and this is not the the big wood stain bottle. Uh, this is the from the paint line, the small ink bottles. And it's some interesting stuff. Uh, I go into more details about it, but uh, there's a reason why I'm not going to do it in this video. Uh, but anyway, it's a... Uh, it's interesting to play around with. I wish uh, I'm still playing around with it a bit more, find out exactly the pros and cons. But uh, you may want to try it out. It's uh, this is the strong tone, and uh, didn't work too bad. Along with playing with new colors for wood, uh, I also toyed around with some new metallics on this project. Uh, for the steel metal, I base coated in. Vallejo Model Air Gun Gray, and I noticed it seemed to have a slight, ever so slight bluish uh, tinge to it, so to highlight it, uh, I'm using Vallejo Model Air Chrome instead of my standard steel color. And uh, at this stage here, this is about a 50-50 mix of the Gun Gray and the Chrome, and just going around and adding some highlights. And then after that, using straight Chrome just to uh, do the edging. Again, notice to do the edging using the side of the brush, not the tip of the brush. For shade, I'm glazing with some inks uh, mixed in black together with a little bit of blue. And the ink is very, very thin, and we're going to slowly build it up. And this took about five or six layers. I can't remember how many, but. Uh, the first coat goes on very light. You won't see any difference or much of a difference at all. Uh, let that dry completely, apply another coat, let that dry completely, apply another coat, and you slowly build up the color. Much like layering, but we're just doing it with inks. In the Cauldron of Blood video, I kind of breezed over paint in the gold, and uh, you have to use a different technique on uh, large surfaces like this because a wash just won't work. So we're going to go in a bit bit more detail this time. As always, starting off with a undercoat first, I'm using just straight uh, Vallejo Model Color Flat Earth here, and that's the key to getting bright gold, is you have to put a brown undercoat underneath first. Next comes the shade layer, and this is Glorious Gold mixed with my special color party wash that I use for gold that you can't get anymore because it's out of production. However, you can make the same thing using uh, by using brown and yellow ink mixed together. And uh, this was a mistake I did here. Uh, mixing these two colors together was not dark enough, did not give me enough shade. Uh, I probably should have mixed either sepia or maybe just straight brown in with the gold ink. That would have gave me uh, enough contrast because I did have to go back later and add more. Next comes our base color of Glorious Gold, I'm leaving that previous color uh, mainly in the, the flat areas. Because we're doing a uh, metallic here, uh, the shade's kind of in the middle and we're highlighting out towards the edges. Um, I'm also going over some parts like the rounded uh, surface, the rounded edge of the fender area, top of the fender, uh, because that is going to require a little bit of extra sparkle. And then for the highlights, I mixed in some Vallejo Model Air Steel with the previous gold color and hitting the edges. And I did this twice, second time adding more steel um, to pick out the tips here and there. You want to be careful when highlighting gold, don't add too much of your silver or steel color because then it stops looking like gold. Uh, I did, I normally use only one highlight, but I did use two on uh, this figure just because there was such a huge surface area of gold to paint. And then adding a little bit of shade. Again, my first shade layer was not sufficient, so going back once again with my special auto production color party ink. And again, don't worry, you can make your own by mixing brown and yellow ink together to get something that is a similar color. Right before final assembly, I had to go back and fix the chariot walls. Um, 
remember I did airbrush these and they were just looking, the paint was looking very dry and there wasn't enough contrast in it. Um, part of the problem from airbrushing the paint, I guess, and I didn't uh, highlight enough, but uh, I went back to the airbrush booth and I sprayed some Minotaur, Badger Minotaur uh, Ghost Tint Black uh, in along the center uh, section of the walls, which uh, was a very dangerous thing to do because I could have easily screwed the whole thing up, but uh, especially since the gold was already painted, but it came out okay, um, and it did add a bit more contrast. And then on the edges here, I'm going over them with a glaze of Vallejo Violet ink, just to add a bit more vibrance to the blue violet that was looking too dried out. And uh, this will give it a bit more richness. And uh, thankfully, it was an easy uh, problem to fix. And then finally, and a little bit abruptly, we come to the end of our chariot build. I say abruptly because unfortunately, the last three videos in this series got corrupted and lost. So I did go into more detail uh, about painting the crew and unfortunately that's all gone. Uh, the crew is basically painted the same way as the shades, the base video for this series. Uh, I did paint the armor using the uh, Vallejo, excuse me, the Army Painter ink washes and I really wanted to go into more detail uh, with those. Uh, short review of them, they do have some potential. I kind of like them. I'm still playing around with them to get them to work uh, best, but if you're looking for a uh, quick way to shade various colors, mostly armor, uh, but you can use it on other brown colors. Uh, they're very simple to use. You can just slap them on and they dry perfectly fine. They're similar to the Vallejo shade colors, although I like the Army Painter ones better. And they're also similar to the old GW shades that it's, they're really simple. You just slap them on and call it a day. But unfortunately, we'll have to save that for another video and I'll go into more detail about the Army Painter inks. Uh, this project is done. Final thoughts, I would just suggest that you paint up this uh, project in a uh, smallest number of pieces as possible, or the large, excuse me, the largest number of pieces as possible. So paint before assembly. If you're somebody who just wants to put everything together and paint it, I would at least suggest that you paint the crew separately because trying to get any detail on them while they're mounted in the chariot was uh, it's going to be nigh impossible. But uh, there you are. We have my two chariots are done. That's two more boxes done out of this Dark Elf project and about four more to go. Thanks for watching.